Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. Here's the deal. Recently on Instagram, and by recently I mean yesterday or two days ago, I don't know, time isn't real. Recently on Instagram, I uploaded a reel that featured what I call my needle library. And like, not even really what I call my needle library, more like what I decided to caption that video as describing uh, a big box that I keep my needle cords and end stoppers and stitch markers in. So uh, for ease, we'll call it my needle library. And a lot of people wanted uh, a more in-depth explanation than a six second video that just showed a little bit of it. So. That's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to show you my needle library. Uh, this has been my organizational storage system for my extra cords and end stoppers and sometimes extra needle tips even and stitch markers. Uh, it's been this way since 2021. I'm looking at my Amazon order history here on my iPad and I purchased this October 7th, 2021. So uh, over two years, this has served me really well. It's tried and true, and it's a great system. I will say before we get too deep into this video that this is not my original idea. This, uh, I think my sister Ellie showed it to me uh, around the time I purchased it, and she found it on the blog from Billy and Ba. So if you uh, Google needle storage solution or knitting needle storage solution, um, you might find the Billy and, blah, Billy and Ba blog page that features this idea. Now, they also have more ideas than just using uh, this system that I'll show you more in depth in a minute. Uh, that includes printouts that you can print out. There's a free digital download on the blog, or at least it was free at the time. I'm not sure now. But there's a digital download that is basically an inventory sheet. So you can check um, a box to say how many of a certain item is in each compartment of this system, uh, which might not make a lot of sense uh, saying it to you now before I've actually shown you the insides of this system. But uh, yeah, I just want to acknowledge that this is not my original idea. And in fact, I didn't even find the idea. My sister did and showed it to me. And it's been uh, my practice ever since. I really love using this system. It has saved me a lot of heartache and a lot of frustration. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let me show you my needle library and how I keep it organized, or at least how I invite the opportunity for myself to keep it organized. Sometimes I'm more successful than others, but I'm going to switch to a overhead view so you can kind of see um, from up top what this system looks like and how I've set it up. Thanks, Darby. All right, let's look at it. All right, this is actually pretty perfect seeing as my desk is a little bit of a mess. And actually, um, this is after I spent a few minutes cleaning it up. So, uh, you know what? There's no there's no time for this. So we'll just get that, get that away from here. Here's my knitting journal. Maybe I'll show you more about that uh, later, but that's inspired by Leslie Knit California's Knitting Journal tutorials. Check those out if you want to get into bullet journaling for your knits this year. Okay, so uh, for the most part, why do I have these? Uh, Darby doesn't poop in here. Whatever. All right, so basically cleared most of the things off the desk except what actually is going to go into my needle library, not these. Uh, so let's get the needle library present and accounted for. As you can see, I have a bunch of stickers on my needle library. Um, uh, doesn't come with all these. You can customize it however you like. But basically, this is a photo storage box. You can get it on Amazon, and I'll have the link to mine. Sorry to break the fourth wall, and you can see like the edge where this nice, beautiful purple pad does not extend to on my desk. Whatever. Uh, that's just the way it is. 
Uh, yes, photo storage box. You can purchase this on Amazon or at craft stores like Michael's or Joann's. Uh, they often go on sale, so if you are in the market for one but you are on a budget, keep an eye on it and uh, uh, monitor the price because it fluctuates. I've seen these as low as $15 and as high as $40, so keep that in mind. Another thing that is important to note uh, is the fact that color preferences exist. And this is obviously a clear version, but there are versions that have a clear outer shell and uh, colorful compartments on the inside. You can get rainbow ones. I've seen ones that have like a red, yellow, orange uh, ombre compartment fade kind of thing going on. But uh, I went for clear just for I don't know, uniformity, and I guess because I'm boring. But that's what I did. So basically, like I've said a million times, this is a photo storage box, meaning that each of these little compartments fit a photograph. So uh, let me just see here, just for, for interest, looks like this would fit a four by six photograph. So not really a five by seven photo storage box, but a four by six photo storage box. Now, there are a lot of these little boxes in here and they fit into these grooves. So if you look on the inside of the box, you'll be able to see there are these little teeth and that's what keeps these inner compartments in place. So they're not gonna slide up and down and they all have their own little section. All right. Now, you can organize this however on earth you want. This is just how I've organized mine. But when I purchased this, I also purchased a label maker. And as you can see, I just went to town. So let's start here. This photo storage container, I have labeled with the color, the length, and the size. I pretty much exclusively use Chiagu needles and they come in a few different sizes. There's the mini size, the small size, and the large size. And that is what refers to the size of the needle threading as well as the uh, join on the Chiagu cords. So a blue, eight inch cord could have a small, medium, or in theory, or excuse me, a mini small or in theory large join. So I have uh, categorized them not only based on color, not only based on length, but also based on size. If I were to open one of these, I will find that exact cord that is labeled. So I know that in this box will only be, or should only be, red eight inch cords with small sized joints. So I open this up and here is, you know, one of them and look at that. It is a red eight inch small, perfect. And now I also have, well, I have two of those, but I also have an empty bag. That tells me that one of my red eight inch small cords is in use somewhere in my vast array of chaos and works in progress. So I debated, in fact, every day I debate whenever I open one of these up, I think, man, why do I keep, why do I keep the bags and like the little, I don't know, why do I, why do I keep these? This is like for when someone's selling this, I don't need this, but it is helpful for me because without that bag living in here, I would have no idea that there's another eight inch red small cord out there. So I don't know, it just helps me with my mental uh, mental labor of keeping an eye on where my cords are. So equally, let's say I pick out this red 37 inch small join box. If I open that up, I should only see red 37 inch small join cables. And in fact, that is exactly the case. So uh, I decorate these with stickers as I uh, collect them. Uh, I got like a 90s sticker pack on Amazon a while ago and 
You know, sticker commitment is really difficult for me, but I find that having this uh, photo storage box, I have this whole front portion to play with where I have stickers. This one I think is hilarious. In the year 2020, bleep went down. I'm saying bleep because I don't want to mess with my monetization. So anyway, I live in fear of authority, if you didn't know. And this is toilet paper. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, and then I have, you know, Black Lives Matter, of course, a fuchsia sticker, um, little babies in a tulip, Portland stickers, that's my hometown, Oregon, my home state, etc., uh, etc. Et and I also have stickers on the sides and on the bottom of the box so basically whenever i collect a sticker it goes on my needle library storage box so if you're like me and you have sticker commitment issues consider a storage box because this isn't like a journal where um it will be done at the end of the year. Like I love the idea of putting stickers on a journal and I, I committed to this one on my knitting journal, but I like to use my stickers on something that will, I don't know, be around a long time. So that's why I prefer to put my stickers on my needle library box as opposed to a journal because I want to see them longer than uh, one year down the road. All right, so again, here we have red 30 inch large. And you can see here the join of that cable is larger than the join of this cable. Might be kind of hard to tell, but yeah, this one is larger than this one. And that's just the size large. It will only work with large size needles. So that's pretty much how I've organized um, the cords for my Chiagu needles. And then I have a whole separate compartment just for my end stoppers. And again, I've kept the bags for these. Um, some of them have end stoppers in them. Some of them don't because somewhere those end stoppers are in use. Oh, here's a, here's a surprise. Um, I saw somewhere on Instagram a long time ago that SIM card eject tools uh, work great to tighten cords and needles and end stoppers and I quickly learned uh, they break really easily so I prefer t-pins over the sim, sim card tool but you know different strokes for different folks this uh, compartment is not labeled I should probably label it but these are cable connectors this is what you can use to connect um, two different cables to make a longer cable comes in handy really should label that and then this is not Chiago related, but this compartment has a bunch of my stick mar stitch markers. So I've got my skin in the stitch gemstone markers. Those were gifted to me. I've got my stitch markers from Cushendale Woolen Mills. Excited to go back there in October. I've got some stitch markers that are Outlander themed. My sister gave that to me for Christmas a few years ago. Cute little hedgehog. Yeah, so when I'm feeling kind of fancy or, or spicy or saucy, I'll go into my little stitch marker compartment and pick out something fun. And then uh, in this unlabeled one, I think are, yeah, adapters. So this would make it so I could connect a small needle to a mini cord. So those exist if you didn't know. They are out there, and I think, uh, you know, logic would dictate that there would also be adapters for other sizes, but uh, don't quote me on that. This one, uh, yeah, cable connectors. I forgot I already looked at that. I'm just going to switch these around. Oh, look at this sticker I got. This is from Skein and the Stitch. Holographic. All right, so since we're here, I have some things from my desk that uh, needed to be put away or need to be put away. So might as well do that now. So I'll just show you. I mean, you can probably imagine what it would be like to do that, but I mean, why not show you? So I'm taking off the end stopper here. That was undoubtedly invaluable to me. Um, 
on some project, I don't know. And I'm just gonna put it back in the end stopper bag. Okay, those will be ready to go back in the end stopper compartment, but let's just keep trucking along here. Now I have this, what size is this? I think, I wanna say it's seven, might be wrong. Ha ha, I am right. It's a seven, so I'm gonna grab my red lace set, put it back in the seven compartment. So then I'm guessing this was also a seven, yep. And look, I have sevens again. If I come across a project that needs sevens, I will be ready to go. And while we're at it, let's just put these needle back needles back as well. These are fours. For some of my most used sizes, as you can see, I have um, three sets. Like I have six threes, which equals three sets. So I just put three together in the little three slot. That's just what I do. Everybody is going to organize their needles differently. It's kind of like your your dresser. All your drawers are, are yours to manage. Do what works for you and what's intuitive for you. So there's those back in the needle case. It doesn't look like I have any more end stoppers to um, put away. So I'll just go ahead and put the bags back in the end stopper compartment. And next, I have a cable that's ready to put away. And the way I'm going to determine what size this is, is, doo -doo -doo -doo. here it is, written so small or engraved so small, that's 30 inches, might be difficult to see. So all I have to do is find my red 30 inch small compartment. And here it is right here, grab that. Oh, and here's the bag. The next thing I was going to do was find out the compartment for where this bag goes, but here's the bag right here. Close that up and put it back. We're making great progress. We've got another uh, cord to put away. And again, this is 30 inches, a popular length. I should have just had it kept out. So I'm going to wrap this up. Now I think with that, I should have, oh no, I still have two 30 inches unaccounted for. Let's see if either of these are them. Nope, this one is a 22 inch. So before I put the 30 inch away, I'm just gonna confirm that none of these are 30s because why well, have to take it out multiple times? This one is also a 22 inch and Finally, we have another 30 inch to put away. So this means that there should be one more 30 inch cord unaccounted for since I have one unfilled bag labeled with the 30 inch. So put that in here. Let's close that up. I'll put the open one or the empty one, I should say, on top and put that back. Okay, so now these both are 22 inches, but before I put um, any away in the photo storage compartment, I'm gonna go to my set and just check if my 22 inch is accounted for because the set comes with two eight inches, one 14 inch and one 22 inch. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six metal ends. That means I have three cords in here, which means I have one cord missing. And uh, I could take these all out, but I just kind of try and look through the bag if I can. And I see that I have an eight inch a 14 inch and another eight inch. So the 22 inch is in fact unaccounted for. So instead of first replacing uh, that photo storage compartment, I'm gonna make sure that I am squared up with the cords needed to outfit my needle case. So that is good to go. I'm gonna zip that up. And now I'll put this last 22 inch cord on or in the bag in the corresponding compartment. 
You know that you're a Chiagu girly when this is what the state of many of the bags look like, but you refuse to throw them out. Like, look at this. This has been taped multiple times because I'm trying to keep the bags intact. I don't know. They're just special to me. I don't want to replace with any old other Ziploc. I, I want the original bag. Okay, so those are put away. I will say also, technically I have extra compartments. So one use that I could uh, do for these extra compartments, they pretty perfectly fit shorty sets. And in fact, you can fit a couple shorty sets in here uh, if you have the need. So you can keep not only your extra cords and in stoppers and stitch markers, etc. You can also fit a full shorty set in one of these compartments. This would also be great to have like one compartment for scissors, one for tapestry needles, one for tape measures, and then down the line with your preferred notions. So you could absolutely include shorties and any of your um, preferred notions to make sure that you're set up for success. This closes up, it locks in place. I will say though, something that I think is a design flaw is this is the one handle you can carry it by if you're gonna carry it like a briefcase. If you open this one to carry them together, it will open and you'll, you'll lose all your compartments. So I learned that the hard way and the embarrassing way and learn from my mistake. But there you go. Let me change the view so you can see my face. All right, welcome back. So this is a great, great option. Uh, I am really, really glad that I did this. It wasn't a huge investment because uh, I already had all of these cords. I already had all of these in stoppers. And in fact, I collect them. I continue to collect them as the years go on, either because uh, I can't find the cord I need or it's in a project that I don't remember where it is. You know how it goes. You know you have that size needle or you know you have that length cord, but knowing where you have it is an entirely uh, different problem and different question. So if you're like me, you're probably accumulating these anyway. You might as well invest 20 bucks to have a storage system that is accessible and easy to keep on top of, or at least if you fall behind and you're not on top of it for a long time, it doesn't take too much time to get it reorganized and reset. Uh, so I definitely recommend this and I'm really grateful to Billy and Ba for putting this on the internet because I would never ever have thought of it and it's simply genius. So there you go. I hope that this was a helpful video. I hope that it gave you some ideas. Um, you don't have to do it exactly like I did it just get a photo storage box or something that will work for you to make your life easier. Uh, there are so many things to think about in the day. Worrying about where your cords and end stoppers and needle tips are shouldn't be one of them, okay? So, you know, work smarter, not harder. Give yourself a break and uh, invest a few bucks into a storage solution. And this is one that I highly recommend. This, this uh, uh, basically changed my life. <laughs> And I love it. I love it so much. And I would love to get another one actually for notions. Now that I like walked through that idea um, just now, I think that's a great idea. So maybe I'll think about that in the near future. I'll put my Amazon affiliate link for these in the video description box, as well as the label maker I used. Um, again, these are Chiagu needle cords and accessories that I'm using, but you could use this storage solution for any brand that you use, crochet hooks, Tunisian crochet hooks, whatever. Uh, this is just a great storage solution. I've pe seen people use this for seeds. So, you know, you can think outside the box Except not because it's just a bunch of boxes, um, but you can think about how you can use this and how you can make it um, work for you. So uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for uh, being so interested in this based on the reel I posted. And I hope that this answers the questions some of you had and uh, kind of uh, scratched the itch you had to know more. This is my needle library. This is the organizational system that I use and that I am really, really happy with. Um, if for no other reason than it 
uh, solves my problem of sticker commitment because it gives me something that will be around for a long time. It has a longer life than a year and uh, I can look at all the fun stickers I've collected. In fact, I have some stickers from Dollywood that I need to put on here that I got uh, in December. Yeah, so that's all I have for this video. I uh, would love to know your knitting storage solutions. So if you do something different than this, please let me know in the comments because I'm always wanting to learn. I'm always wanting to see how other people do things and maybe I'll adopt it in my practice with my notions or I don't know, pens or, you know, postcards, who knows? I don't know, but uh, I would be curious to know what you do because I think that we can absolutely learn from each other and in fact we should learn from each other so that's my soapbox moment for the day and that's all I have for this video so if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you don't already and hit that notification bell to be notified of my next upload last but not least head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is knitting if you don't already all right thanks for watching goodbye